The Super Mario RPG remake is not hard enough for me, so I challenged myself to beat the game while only fighting mandatory battles, and I won't be using the lazy shell armor or the super suit. So with that out of the way, let's jump right in. At the outset of the game, Peach gets kidnapped and we fight our first mandatory battle with two Terrapin, no big deal. And next is the iconic battle with Bowser, which serves as the tutorial for the game. All we have to do in this battle is attack the chain chomp that holds up his chandelier and the battle is won. After we bounce off of this turtle to retrieve our juicy pink peach, a sword impales the castle. We get launched all the way back to Mario House. We then get bonked by Toad, save the game, and head to our next battle with the Hammer Bros. At level 1, this battle presents a little bit of a challenge. I hit a jump attack for 40 damage, but the first bro's multi-hammer attack does 12 out of Mario's 20 HP. I still wasn't used to the modified timing in the action command system. It's subtly different oh, from no. the original. The second Hammer Bro takes me down to 4 HP, and I'm forced to use one of my precious mushrooms to heal. In the in the second round, though, I block almost perfectly and do 42 damage to the other Hammer Brother. In round 3, I block twice perfectly and finish off Hammer Bro number 1 with a punch attack. Hammer Bro number 2 powers up in response, but it's too late for him. I take him out with a jump attack, steal his hammer, and head on to the Mushroom Kingdom. After a quick chat with the Chancellor, I meet a new tadpole friend who has his frog coin stolen, and in preparation for the battles to come, I head to the shop. Money is quite tight at this point, so I buy a shirt for Mario and pants for Mallow, and with the final 30 coins, I grab two honey syrups and two pick-me-ups. I can get accessories later, but I need flower points for the upcoming battles. I head to Bandit's Way, and the first thing I do is grab this hidden treasure chest that contains a Coca-Cola. This item is kind of like a mega elixir in Final Fantasy. It heals all of the HP and FP of my allies, but more importantly, it sells for 200 coins, and that money will be very useful later. We also grab a star to gain a level for both Mallow and Mario, and Mallow learns HP rain in the process, and that means we're now ready to fight Barney's evil clone Croco. Mario's jump attack is our most damaging option to start with, and Croco can take out two-thirds of Mario's HP with one tackle attack. Again, still getting used to the action commands. Mallow can't do much damage in this fight because he lacks a weapon, so he'll be our obligate cleric. And fortunately, since Mallow learned HP rain, he's perfect for the job. I get hit and heal again with Mallow, but the third time Croco tackles, I learn the timing just a little bit better and do a perfect block. So Mario attacks, and Mallow uses a honey syrup. Croco then uses his bomb attack, which scares the bejesus out of me. In the original game, these bombs were unblockable and made this battle absolute misery, particularly in my runs where Mario and Mallow couldn't use armor. But because I can block now, that's really no problem. And the timing for these bomb blocks seems pretty generous as well. So when Mario gets hit by a bomb on the next turn, I get the perfect block and it does zero damage. And Krakow then misses his next bomb entirely. Nice. Notice as I progress through this battle that Mario's jump is continually getting stronger. This mechanic is important since it'll help me a ton in later battles, so every jump jump I can do is extremely important. Eventually, Croco uses a weird mushroom, signifying his HP is low and the battle is nearing a close. A couple more jumps take him out. We retrieve Mallow's frog coin and we head back to the Mushroom Kingdom. I grab a few more pick-me-ups and honey syrups from the shop and I head into the castle. At this point, I tried multiple times to go back to the vault to grab the items in there, but the Shymores were too fast and caught me. And for whatever reason, the game doesn't let you run from battles with them, so I had to reset. And we head on to Clay Morton. He has four guards and the first time you take them out, he becomes stunned. So I hit Clay Morton with a jump attack and take out all four guards with Mallow's thunder attack. That's essentially the strategy for this battle. Never leave the guards alive because they'll wreck you. Clay Morton's single target flame attacks are blockable and therefore are no problem. And he uses flame twice in a row and follows it up then with a flame wall. This attack is quite powerful but did very little damage to my characters and there is a very good reason for that. Because my blocking strategy has been good, I've been able to build up my chain gauge to 22. Building up this gauge gives gives bonuses to your characters based on which party members are in battle. Mario's chain gauge helps him build up the action gauge faster, and Mallow's gives magic defense, which is why Clay Morton's flame wall attack did so little. Editing Tentacles here to say that I was wrong. Mallow's chain gauge gives magic attack, not magic defense. Sorry about that. At this point in the battle, Clay Morton does very little beyond summon more guards, meaning all I have to do is cast thunder and jump. I have Mario use a honey syrup to ensure I don't run out of FP, but the battle goes pretty smoothly from here on out. So we next head to the Kiro Sewers. I grab the star in here for some extra experience and Mario reaches level 3, so it's time to fight Belome. Normally before I fight Belome, I grab the true form pin from the treasure chest monster, but no such luck this time since that's an optional battle. Mario's jump attacks are once again the most efficient way to damage this boss, but I do try out my action gauge command. Unfortunately that does 15 less than my jump attack, so we're not gonna do that again. Belome then eats Mallow leaving Mario to fight alone, but after two jumps, Mallow 
is released and Mario gets turned into a scarecrow. This is one of my favorite statuses in this game. It prevents the use of the action and the item commands, meaning you can only use spells or defend. That means that Mario can still jump and do a ton of damage. The only problem, though, is that Belome next puts Mallow to sleep. That means I have no way to heal or restore flower points because Mario can't use items in scarecrow form. And then he turns both Mario and Mallow into scarecrows. Again, I have zero flower points, so there's not much I can do but wait and hope I can get some perfect guards in. But oddly, Belome for the most part stops using damaging moves. Mallow gets turned back into a tadpole and he's able to use a honey syrup to end the stalemate. And then he gets eaten again. But Belome's HP are low enough that Mario can finish him off with two more jump attacks. And much like Dwayne the Rock Johnson does to every gay man after a good oiling down, Belome floods my basement. Which means I play the Midas River course, which I find quite difficult in this remake, have a chat with Frog Fuchsius, or in this case the Frog Sage, and get Mallow's first weapon, the Froggy Stick. This represents a huge power spike for him as he can now do damage without using magic. You know, until I remove him from the party forever later. Sorry, Bay. But we're not removing him yet, because next we have to head into the forest to fight Boyer. And that means we get Gino. And the power spike of Gino is incredible. He literally has no equipment on, but his magic does a ton of damage. And his physical attack does as much as Mario's jump attack. Boyer does present one small problem, though, and that's his static electricity attack. It almost completely massacres Mario and Mallow and does more than half of Gino's HP. That means that two of them will completely wipe out my team. So I burn some mushrooms and use an HP rain, and then Mario goes down. But he's revived, he jumps, and Mallow restores some FP before Boyer blocks off items. And from this point on, Boyer primarily uses single target attacks for some reason, which is frankly just good RNG. I've mentioned it before, but all single target attacks can be blocked. There's one exception though, and that's status attacks. And Boyer soon puts Mario to sleep and uses a static electricity again. But I heal my team, block a bolt attack, and continue attacking with Gino and Mario's strong attacks while using Mallow to heal. And finally, Boyer blocks all three buttons, signaling that it's time to use a triple attack and finish the battle. A tough fight, but ultimately no problem for Plumber, Tadpole, and Wood. <laughs> I said Wood. So I get my second star, and it's time to head to the capital of Mexican cuisine in the Mushroom Kingdom, Moleville. Yum. Our next challenge is Croco. Now, let me say something. In my last video, I talked all about the changes in this remake, and I mentioned that Croco is harder to catch. Some commenters were very mean to me and mentioned that he just goes in a circle, but that is not what happened. He literally just disappeared. I went backwards and forwards and did about five laps around the place, and then I went backwards again, but ultimately he just kind of showed up near the bomb passage again and hung out there, which is weird. Anyway, I've done a ton of challenges for the original version of this game, many of which I'll be remaking, playlist link in the discreetly do, and I expected this battle to be awful, but they've made some changes that make this battle a lot easier. First of all, Krakow's bombs are once again blockable. Also, the timing for blocking his chomp attack, which is now called Monster Toss, seems a lot more generous. He does get a couple of my characters down to critical health, but because he can only attack one character at a time, he never really gets the better of me. He then takes my items, which has me a little worried, but it's ultimately no problem, because in the second phase, I have his block timing down so well that he doesn't do a single point of damage. I was expecting to suffer during this run, but maybe later. But anyway, that leads us first to a star, which gives another level up for all three characters. And we head on to the real boss of the mines, Punch Punchinello. Punchinello's gimmick is that he summons bombs that will explode and do a ton of damage. Or they would. Except the new splash damage mechanic in this remake completely changes things. I get some good damage off initially before he summons bombs. And then two sets of splash damage are enough to kill all of them and to prevent me from taking even a smidgen of damage. Another attack ends the first phase, and before even a single one can explode, my characters do enough to end phase two. And now it's time for the big bombs, which I'm quite worried about. But my triple game is full, and I use that to do a whopping 264 damage and take out Punchinello in a single strike. So I end this fight without a single bomb exploding. You know, except for the single giant bomb that covers us in soot, but hey, RPGs are dirty business. So we grab our third star, ride a minecart back to Moleville, and leave without even finishing our meal. We head through Booster Pass and to Booster Tower, where Bowser joins the party. By the way, Bowser is just as cute as the original. He's emotionally vulnerable, and I just want to hug him. 
And because he's so cute, I replace my tadpole with a turtle. So now we have a party of Mario, Bowser, and Gino. And Bowser, when he joins, is completely overtuned. He has amazing defenses and offenses, so he'll make the next few battles a cakewalk. Or a peachwalk, if you will. I next grab the masher before I head up the tower, given that it will give Mario an enormous attack boost. We have a quick cameo from Retro Mario, get Bowser a new kitty, and play the curtain game, which we win. And we get the booster charm. That's quite useful because it halves all elemental damage, but I forget to equip it. Oops. Anyway, that's a shame because the next boss fight is with Knife Guy and Great Guy, who can be quite tough. But having Bowser in the party gives us a huge leg up. Bowser's terrorize spell inflicts the fear status. That doubles the damage they take and halves the damage they deal. One thing I love about the remake is these nifty little indicators that show you when an enemy is afflicted with a status. Within a few turns, though, Knife Guy goes down, and that's before he can even stack with Great Guy. And of course, Great Guy, despite his lack of partner, manages to get Mario down to critical HP. But rather than heal, I just go ham on him and take him out with a bunch more physical attacks. Fear is a hell of a drug. So we climb Booster Hill, a really fun recreation of the classic minigame, and I get seven flowers, which is a pretty good performance. And that means we're now on to what was the final boss of every single one of my solo character runs, the cake. Before challenging it, though, I use my frog coins to get a party bracer from Tadpole Pond. That will double my defenses for the entire battle, and I hope that'll be enough to keep my characters from dying and get me through the second phase of the battle, which is the hardest part. I also play the Peach minigame, and I get a kiss from the daddiest of all turtles, and then it's time to head to Pound Town with some cakes. Did you know that cakes have layers just like onions? And ogres? Anyway, the first phase isn't too bad. The cake stays dormant while the two chefs attack, but their attacks aren't incredibly powerful. I open with my party bracer, which will carry over to the next phase, and my characters easily destroy phase one. But now it's time for phase two, the ultimate run-ender. The goal is to extinguish all of the cake's candles and then deal one final attack to finish this phase. I start with two attacks right away, and the cake uses lullaby, putting Bowser to sleep. I take out another two candles, and the cake uses lullaby to put Bowser to sleep again, wasting its turn. So I take out two more candles, and it uses a weak physical attack, followed by Blizzard, which does very little, to be honest. And I take out two more candles. Then it uses Water Blast and Blizzard again, and even though my characters are all at critical health, two more attacks is enough to end a phase two. And we're through the hardest part of the battle. Mario immediately dies, but after he's revived, I'm able to use physical attacks and Mario's powerful jumps to do a ton of damage. The cake uses Sandstorm to make my characters afraid, but it never takes out more than one at a time, and eventually, Booster devours the leftovers, and we finally get Peach. Which means we now have my personal favorite party of Mario, Peach, and Gino. Peach can heal extremely effectively, Gino will eventually get access to Gino Boost, which will raise attack and defense, and Mario will be... well, he'll be jumping. So we head back to the Mushroom Kingdom, watch Peach turn into Mary Poppins, chat with the Frog Sage, and get our fourth star at Star Hill. After which, we head to Seaside Town. We learn about a star and a sunken sheep, and uh, don't buy a boat. Before I leave, I grab a firebomb and an ice bomb from the shop, since those will make my life a lot easier later. And then we finally head to the Seaside. This is the site of another star, which nets us levels for everyone but Peach, which is unfortunate. The one problem with Peach at this point is that her HP are pitifully low. So while she's in my party, there's definitely a chance that a strong gust of wind could cause her to fall from the vine. To mitigate that, I briefly head back to Seaside Town to grab the sea item, which will let me immediately run from any and all battles without question. And then we fight a squid and his Tantocles. No relation to the real Tantocles. I leave Peach out of this battle for the aforementioned reasons, and I use Bowser, Mario, and Gino. Gino boosts up Mario to start, given that Bowser doesn't take much damage at all from the Tantocles. And then Bowser uses Terrorize to have the incoming damage that the Tantocles can do. They go down, I rinse and repeat, and now it's time to play the squid games. And once again, Bowser completely dominates. He does a ton of damage, and he takes very little too. He started at a much higher level than everybody else, and that's probably why. I end the battle with a triple attack that shoots stars at the squid and destroys it, which means this capsized ship only has one more set of seamen for me to fight, Johnny and his gang. But there are a couple of things that I need to do first. The first is grab the safety ring. This item prevents all status effects and instant death attacks. And while I would be delighted to get the safety badge, a less powerful item that simply negates all status effects, that would require that I fight an optional battle with another treasure chest monster. So I move on to Johnny's lair. He has two sets of shark friends that want to fight me first, and those are mandatory battles, but they're dispatched pretty quickly. And then the real fight begins. I'm going to try to keep one of Johnny's sharks alive, given that that will prevent him from going into a one-on-one -on -one battle with Mario. I've now replaced Bowser with Peach, since she's gained a level and now has a much more reasonable amount of HP. I start off by using a party bracer on the entire team, since I got a freebie in the last 
last battle, and then I attack with Peach and Mario while I Geno boost up my other party members. Splash damage has me worried, as that may kill the other members of Johnny's party, but I eventually thin them out to one remaining side shark, and I go to town primarily with Geno and Mario's magic attacks. Peach is on FP restoration duty. I go for a huge super jump with Mario, but unfortunately I only hit 41 super jumps, though that still does a ton of damage. Another Geno beam and some more super jumps is enough to take him out, and we get our fifth star. But the joy of receiving is short-lived, and we must experience the joy of giving, because the creepy shroom people in Seaside Town steal our star from Star Hill and transform into the newly named Spiritovich. As usual, I start by boosting my characters, and then it's time to attack like crazy. Spiritovich's Water Blast does good but not great damage against my team, and it can easily be healed off by Peach's Group Hug. And more importantly, all of Spiritovich's single target attacks are blockable as usual. He eventually splits into two and takes out Peach with a couple of spear strikes, but she's quickly revived, reboosted and relentless in slapping the shit out of this pokey prick. He eventually splits again, but before he can try to spit roast my wood peach and plumber with his spear, he goes down. And now we truly have the fifth star. So we release the villagers and head to our next destination, Land's End. And our next four mandatory fights are with some shady ants. I don't think there's any way to avoid these, but if you know of any, please let me know in the comments. On the first fight, I burn my ice bomb and get a freebie, and then I use it on the second fight as well. The third ant fight is a bit harder since I now have to rely on my character's attacks to kill them. I take out the first ant before any of them can attack and I boost Mario, who then blocks both of their normal attacks, and the second and third go down in no time at all. The fourth ant battle goes as well as the third, and I realize that I got really lucky. None of the ants used their carny kiss attack, which would have one-shotted my characters. Of course, it can now be blocked, so maybe it wouldn't have, but still, very lucky. I guess it's nice that it's not an immediate run-ender anymore. But hey, we'll save more about that for a future solo run. I then grab the stars in Land's End, getting a few levels in the process, and we head into the lair of Belome 2. Belome 2 likes to create clones of my characters who will then attack alongside him. I start the battle by boosting Peach, and then Belome puts Mario to sleep. But now that I have the safety ring, Peach is immune to status effects. That means that if anyone has a bad status, she can now immediately cure it while restoring their HP, which she does with a group hug. Aren't hugs great? Belome then clones Peach, but her clone is the weakest one, and it goes down to an attack from Mario. We rinse and repeat with another Peach clone and more sleep spells until Bellome clones Gino, and that clone also goes down before he can attack. Then he clones Peach again, who goes down to a hammer strike, and one more parasol smash from Peach is enough to tongue-tie this delectable doggo. So we head to Land's End, get scammed by an old lady, play Stomp the Chomp, and donate a key to a golden cat dog, and head on to Bean Valley. But on the way, I farm a bunch of frog coins from the Paratroopa course. This way, I can buy the EXP boost from Seaside side town, which will allow me to give double experience to one of my characters and make them more viable for the final boss fight. And the person I choose to equip it with is, of course, Peach. She'll be able to do massive physical damage at the end of the game. So Mario, for now, gets the safety ring. And now, in the land of the beans, it's time to turn this big red bean into paste. Smilax phases 1, 2, and 3 are no big deal, but I use these phases to Geno boost my other party members. And then the big guy comes out. I take out his first crony, and then he immediately uses Petal Blast to turn Geno and Peach into mushrooms, which is very mushing bad. I heal Peach with a mid-mushroom since she's near death, and then I focus Mario's energy on the other crony, until Smilax once again gets my characters into the red. But Gino then detransforms, followed by Peach, who group hugs and makes everything better. And then I get transformed again. Mushroom is just the worst status in the game. You recover a small amount of HP every turn, but you can't do a thing. But because Gino and Peach are boosted, they survive Smilax's attacks and revert. But on Gino's next reversion, he takes takes out Smilax with a big punch and I breathe a sigh of relief. I grab the seed that the Shy Guy drops and I head up the beanstalk to Nimbus Land. There, I enter my golden era and enjoy some quality time with a big black bird. And then with three big turtle birds, which is a mandatory fight. And then a big pink bird O named Kathy. Kathy's fight, like many of the fights in this game, has been made much easier, but I'll get to that in a second. I start, as usual, by Geno boosting my party while I attack the shell. Four attacks bring Kathy into phase two, which is where things get interesting. In the SNES version, single eggs in this phase could not be blocked. However, if your character spent a turn to defend, the eggs could be bounced back towards Kathy and subsequently destroyed, blowing up and doing damage to her in the process. But these eggs can now bounce off you even if you just block them, which makes life a whole lot easier. In addition, splash damage can destroy the eggs as well. That means that you can do damage to Kathy with an attack and then make the egg 
explode at the same time. I talk more about this battle, but it frankly was so easy that it's not worth it. Kathy goes down, and the next fight is with Valentina. Before that, though, I stock up on some pick-me-ups and some cleansing juice in Rose Town. For this battle, I put Gino front and center so that he can immediately boost himself, and Dodo takes him away. I get smashed by a multi-strike at one point, but otherwise the fight is uneventful, and I hit most of my blocks. That means it's time to head back to Mario and Peach. The main challenge of this fight is that Valentina's all-party attacks can inflict status effects, and she almost immediately puts Peach to sleep. But Mario, with a safety ring, is immune and cleanses that status with one of the cleansing juices I purchased earlier. And soon after, Mario's punches bring back Dodo and the fight truly begins. In case you don't know, it's a waste of your time to attack Dodo here. Defeating Valentina ends the entire battle, so you can just go to town on her. And she and Dodo will leave when their expiration date arrives. Gino boosts Peach and then immediately gets turned into a mushroom. Peach is then cured and then gets put to sleep. So things are going well, I guess. Valentina does eventually take down Mario with a water blast, but Peach now has the comeback spell and is able to bring him back to life. But then Dodo takes him out with his big pecs. I revive him again, and then Peach and Gino get mushroomed again. But after curing Peach and having her cure Gino again, two more attacks are enough to take down Valentina, who can no longer distract me with boob jiggles, only boob circles. And now it's time to go search for star number six in the volcano. Before that, though, I grab the fertilizer from the watering can Shy Guy and head back to Rose Town to grab the lazy shell times two. I won't be using the armor, but the weapon is arguably Mario's best. I also head to Monster Town and grab the ghost badge. This very useful accessory will have the damage a character takes from all attacks, and there's one battle in particular where that will be quite important, which is why I equip that on Mario now. I pass off the safety ring to Gino, and then I head into the volcano. There are a couple of unavoidable encounters here, one with this tree stump and one with the stone turtle thing. Again, if you know how to avoid these, please let me know in the comments. I need to know. Future Tantacles here to say that I actually did figure out the tree stump thing in my Mario only run. You can literally just jump right by him if you just go straight to the right. But yeah, look forward to more challenge runs in the future. Anyway, they go down, we buy fire equipment from the shop, and we head on to fight the Zar Dragon. This boss has an issue with balls, and he hopes to pass that issue on to me. But this isn't my first time at the rodeo, and I'm very experienced with balls. Anyway, once again with the new mechanics, this fight is now nerfed, because before the balls explode on me, Mario gets to act, and if he does a perfect action command with his physical attacks, his splash damage will smash all of the balls immediately. <laughs> I said balls again, by the way. Anyway, this battle is pretty boilerplate because of this new mechanic. Gino boosts, Peach heals, Mario wrecks some balls, and once the Zar Dragon dies, Zombone comes out. That's right, where there are balls, there's a bone. And Zombone doesn't have any special gimmicks. In the old game, he would often get two attacks in a row and just wreck, but that is never the case now. He gets one attack at a time, period. Peach now reaches level 15, we save, and then we head on to the Axum Rangers, which actually might be challenging. The way this battle works is that pink heals the enemy party, green primarily casts magic, and black, red, and yellow all deal physical damage. However, if two rangers go down before red does, he'll power himself up and be able to do gargantuan strikes against me. So the first order of business is, of course, boost Peach so I can keep the team healthy, and then Gino immediately gets taken out. I make it my business to pursue black since he's typically the hardest ranger. However, his bombs are now also blockable, and he goes down to a few physical attacks. Then I throw a fire bomb, which takes down pink, and I get one attack in on red before he powers up. Now that black is gone, the enemies can still do a lot of damage, but not enough to threaten me substantially. However, I do take down red given his damage potential, and then I defeat green. Yellow is the final frontier, and he manages to kill Mario before I'm able to take him out. He also takes down Gino, but with one final lazy shell attack, he yields to Red, who starts firing the Breaker Beam. And on the recharge turns, I heal and then continue the offensive. And within two turns, the Breaker Beam and the Axum Ranger ship has been defeated. So we're in the home stretch. I grab Peach's frying pan from Moleville, her most powerful weapon, and then I take the bus, another thing that I don't think you should buy, to Bowser's Castle. To avoid more battles, I reset every single time I encounter a battle floor, and I do all of the action and quiz stages. Then I head on to fight the newly christened Wiza Koopa. And this battle actually has not been made easier. It's perhaps one of the only battles in the main game that's been made a little harder. You see, in the old game, when Wiza Koopa summoned a bomb, once it exploded, he would freeze and not do anything. He'd just become a sitting duck. But that is no longer the case. However, I don't let the bomb that he summons do any damage to me because of Plumber, Peach, and Wood's triple move, which prevents all damage from one attack. So the bomb 
Cannonball explodes, does no damage, and then it's business as usual. Wise Koopa summons a Jinx clone next, which I take out quickly, and then he goes down soon after, and we move on to Boomer. And Boomer, well, he was frankly pitiful. I'm not even gonna talk about him. He just dies. But Exor. This is a fun one, because we can cheese Exor pretty gosh darn quickly. If we kill one of the eyes, Exor's protection goes down, and we can use Geno's Geno Whirl to do 9,999 damage to the top part. And I do miss it a couple of times, but eventually I get it, and Exor dies within a couple minutes. This could also be done in the old game, but I never used this exploit. But apparently it's meant to be there because they kept it in, and now is my time. And speaking of time, my next boss is a giant clock. And once again, this is a nerfed boss. All of the boss's most powerful attacks, namely the Dinglings, Dark Star, and Roulette, are now blockable. The timing for Dark Star is pretty easy for me, but the timing for Roulette is basically impossible. So Peach does die to a Roulette, which causes instant death, but she's revived almost instantly. The right bell goes down, the clock kills Mario and turns Peach into a mushroom, and then I frantically scramble to cure status and revive Mario. After a bunch of reboosting, the bell goes down to a final jump attack, and all that's left is the clock face. It does manage to turn Peach and Mario into mushrooms again, and then kill Mario. But otherwise, it can't really do enough to threaten me. Peach, Gino, and Mario now do amazing physical damage, and they break the clock's face. So we head on to our next mandatory fight, a Spiritovich fight. It's easy. Whatever. And then, we have to fight Cloaker and Domino. Cloaker does physical attacks and is weak to magic, and Domino does magical attacks and is weak to physical attacks. I go after Cloaker first because his physical attacks are far more powerful than Domino's magical attacks, and once he dies, Domino joins up with a giant snake. But if you read my resume, you'll know that not only do I have experience with balls, but I'm also very skilled in handling snakes. I focus all of my power on the snake, hit it hard, and there's really no trouble. They only manage to get four attacks in before Peach beats their face in with her cookware. And ooh, we have just a few more to go. Next are the clerk, manager, and director, again nerfed because their single target bomb attacks can now be blocked, which is a yay. Down with managers, up with Karens, and specifically up with Karens who eat eggs. Because the next boss is the gun yoke. I switch the experience booster to Gino for this fight because he's close to a level, and Peach gets the good gear now, the safety ring. And even in this challenge run, this battle hasn't really changed. Both the gun yoke and the factory chief are still susceptible to sleep. That means that if I have Peach use sleepy time and then only use magic attacks to damage them, I'm basically invincible. I do boost my party just to be safe before I strike the factory chief with a lazy shell strike, but I end up blocking his attack anyway, so it really didn't matter. I put him back to sleep, and then he goes down pretty quickly. Once he's down, I use the rest of my flower points and a maple syrup's worth to take down the gun yoke. I do lose control a little bit and forget to refresh sleep, but it can't do enough damage in one turn to threaten my team, and it goes down. And that means it's finally time to fight Smithy. But before that, my cat requests that you hit the subscribe do button and join my Discord server, where you can get immediate updates whenever I post a video or go live on YouTube. Actually, she doesn't request it. She demands it. Meow. In the original game, I've beaten Smithy with each character individually, and I will link those videos in the discreetly do, but I've never tried to beat him at this low a level. Mario is at level 14, Gino at level 15, and Peach at level 17, and to me, that's kind of crazy. I take the EXP booster off of Gino and give him the defense scarf, and I head on in. The first phase isn't too big of a deal. Gino boosts everyone up, Peach heals, and Mario goes to town with his lazy shell. Things do get a bit dicey, and Mario takes an L, but he soon gets back up and gets reboosted, and we're on the road again. Gino uses Gino Blast, Peach gives metal on metal action, Mario uses a Croca Cola to restore the party and their FP, and everything just generally goes well. Well, and it's not too long before Smithy enters his final phase. And by the way, Smithy has a star piece around his neck on a necklace. That's really cute. I love that detail. Anyway, we get a couple attacks in before Smithy morphs, and once again, I realize that Smithy's single target attacks can all be blocked. The bullets, the instant death magnums, all of them. I get about 1500 damage in on the first form before we move to the magic form, and I'm starting to see that this battle has been hella nerfed even more than before. In the original game, the magic and bullet forms of Smithy would often get two attacks in a row, but that literally never happens in this 
fight. Smithy's head gets an attack, Smithy's body gets an attack, and then your party gets to attack. Kind of disappointing, honestly. My characters don't seem to be in any danger. So after getting a bunch of damage in, he switches to the invincible form, and I hit him with an ice bomb, and then several of my rock candies. I get a bunch of freebies along the way as well, and I swear they've increased freebie luck in this game. It's so frequent now. He shreds my Geno boosts, and then I reapply them to Peach, then Mario, then to Geno himself, using rock candies and getting more freebies along the way. He then switches back to the tank form, Mario attacks twice, wastes a magnum on Peach, who has the safety ring, and Gino blasts him, disabling the body for a second time. Unfortunately, Gino does get hit with a magnum, since that attack causes instant death, and Gino doesn't have protection against it, so he gets taken down, and Smithy transitions into the treasure chest form. Peach quickly revives Gino, and I have Mario use a firebomb, and that ends the battle after just four phases. I talked a lot about changes made in this game, and if you want to hear more about them, watch this video right here. Don't buy a boat. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.